Well, goodness me, week nine is upon us already then, and day one of week nine is centred around York. We've also got racing at Windsor. We start off at York with the Symphony Group Handicap, which is a five furlong lot of 110. A decent looking field flat with sick beats for Hans Jones. The top rated, but plenty in there with chances in that one should be a good start to the day. Then we get the first pattern race today, which is the Group 3 Acom Stakes for two-year-olds. A small field for this, just the six of them. So just one unlucky trainer that won't take home any prize money. It looks to be a wide open race with Molly at Surfer and Hans Jones both having good chances. You would think well rated ahead of all of the other horses in the race. The third race of the day is the Great Voltage, which of course is a ledger trial and another very small field for this one. Just five of them again. So some odd fields this week, some small ones and some huge ones as well. Treaty of Melbourne for Paul Rhodes is top rated in this one, but there's only two pounds difference on official ratings between the top three. Treaty of Melbourne for Paul Rhodes, prosecutor for Steve Rann and masterclass for Joshua Sutherland. The other two, Fame Seeker for David Robertson rated 91 and the Rag Exposition of 65. Doesn't appear to have much of a chance, but should still pick up a few pounds in prize money, the fourth race of the day is the Judmont International, the Graveyard of Champions. Of course, this one, the very first running saw Brigadier Gerard suffer his only defeat. And Young Garzella Day for Darren Thompson is the top one in this. I mean, one, two of his three outings so far, he's rated a couple of pounds superior to Miss Millennium. And the Derby winner of the Coliseum will be trying to take it four to three odds, but plenty of good horses in there. And looking down the field, the top eight or nine have all got good wins behind them already this season so it should be a really good race but a bit of a big field for that so maybe one or two hard luck stories come the end of the race the Lanston Buildings Handicap will follow that that's a, the first long distance race of the week a two mile nought to a hundred and another smallish field for this one as well with just the eight runners despite the fact that you could put two in I think in this so I'll a surprise there I think Darren House has got two in um, but it looks like a wide open race. Two miles is won this season, so Stony Miss and Portents as well. Funky Music has been close on a couple of occasions, and Zoe Hippopotamus has also been thrown in of a decent rating, according to the trainer. Race number six is the two year old Phillies. Uh, that's the Lather Stakes over six furlongs. And once again, a smallish field for this, but Enchanted Ghost may have scared a few of them away, being unbeaten, but only officially two pounds superior is a powerful beauty, maybe a bit of a Bit of a surprise to a few of that, but Powerful Beauty did take the golden slipper earlier on in the season. His form dropped off just a little bit. Welcome to the Jungle and Rebecca Curtis both look worthy opponents for the likely favourite in that one. The seventh race at York, EBF Stallions August 6th. This is a one mile five furlong event, a uh, 0 to 90, and the top rated there, Pace Ashton Lawn, is running off 90, so we're going to look around top weight and has forced virtually all the other ones out of the handicap with uh, 22 pound superior to the rest of them on the trip may be a little bit on the short side for that one so it could then be a wide open race to the rest of them the talk of the tan for Derek Hinton looks to have the best recent form of him one last time out but that could well be a wide open race if the trip does prove to be too short for the top rated pace Ashton Lord we then nip off to Windsor for three races at Windsor. The first one of them is a listed race, the Windsor Castle Stakes for two year olds over a mile and a furlong. And again, we've got an unbeaten horse top of the pile on this one, Bay of Biscaya for Darren Thompson. But Millennium Most Wanted for Molly at Surfer has also won two of its last three outings. And also, Call My Bluff for Steve Ram was a winner recently, as was Black Magic and Favourite Lunchtime for Django. So, plenty in there. With a chance from Rainbow Lynn right towards the bottom of the ratings is also had a win this season as well. So looks to be a pretty open race that one. Despite the fact that Bay of Biscaya is unbeaten and liable to go off a bit of a warm order. The second race at Windsor is the Winter Hill Stakes. That's a one mile two furlong group three for three odds and upwards. And um, Wuchang Gratu Law for Vinnie Gerard is the top rated there by a couple of pounds. Made to be broken for Joshua Sutherland's form doesn't look too good but he's probably been running in higher grade races so don't take much notice of that this looks to be wide open with the doctor and record plant previous winners also in the race the 10th race of the day and the third from windsor is the brain nursery obviously for two-year-olds and this one is over a mile bigger field for this one quite a, quite a big field for this one to be honest and smallpox looks to have a great chance for Carla Agante, Cheeky Monkey for Django and the Hurricane for Joshua Sutherland. Also Fright Night for Graham Clutterbuck's got some good form, so that one should be a wide open race. We then go back to York for the last two races of the day. The Clipper Logistics Handicap, which is 
over the extended mile trip. Um, that's a 0 to 110. Thumbelina, the top rated there for Stephen Rand at 108. Thing for Joshua Sutherland and Enping Ripio for Vinnie Gerrard. Also looked to have a great chance, but the eye is always drawn to horses that have won last time out. And Tina's Villa for Darren Thompson looks to be well in the weights there and should be difficult to beat. The final race of the day is the Yorkshire Oaks. This is for fillies, of course. We still run it for three-year-olds. It's now to open old, older horses, I think, in, in real life. It's still a, a, looks like it's going to be a good race, though, but Treaty of Versailles will go off a very, very warm favourite. An eight, rated £8 superior to the rest of them. Lost at sea looks to be the only one that could possibly give her any sort of a race, but Treaty of Versailles is probably going to be your lucky last get-out stakes winner there, but don't expect much of a price on that one. So that's your day one, then. We'll be back for more action tomorrow.